Hey Jen in Sanford, North Carolina. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and as a treat to you on your 76th birthday, your favorite son, no not him, no not him, not, nope, not the other one, keep going, keep going, Reed, that's right, <laughs> Reed and his wife Brandy and their three sons, your grandchildren, Nathan, Austin, and Jordan have treated you to a pair of Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarers color 6052 which is the black crystal in the 55 eye size so let's go ahead and begin let's start making your birthday present for your 76th birthday your birthday of independence and that what 76 is the liberty one so this is your italian leather ray-ban case your ray-ban cleaning cloth which works best when upside down by the way and a little bit of junk mail because that's what they're doing now whoops i dropped my flashlight your price is going up <laughs> um, and of course junk mail because you just don't get enough of it in your mailbox so they're putting it in and designer eyeglass cases now so this is your frame this is how it comes the little plastic sleeve that was on the left temple before gravity pulls it off it goes on there to prevent protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping and of course I'm gonna put it on there when I mail it to you these are the original lenses that come in here these are the heavy glass sunglass lenses in fact let's go ahead and take out those heavy glass lenses now pop them out put them on the counter and we're going to cut some lightweight unbreakable bulletproof lenses to go in here with your prescription in them so i'm going to take your italian frame put it into the tracing element of my italian i'm sorry of my french edger and hopefully they won't start fighting so let's wake everything up Hit the trace button and a little stylus is going to come up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of your right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. We're at here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive free clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses if that's what you want. My receipt has my federal ID tax number on there, and if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will be reim reimbursed from this purchase, even if they're not prescription. So, that is your lenses. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance real quick. I'm going to put in the bifocal height real quick. And, let's mark that this is a bifocal. It's going to change this grid and give me that layout. These are your lenses. Before I get going, I need to cut them down to fit in here. So, let me get my pocket knife out. Or... I'm going to use my $40,000 pocket knife this time. So I'm going to put your lens in there. You can see your bifocal segment in there. I'm going to get it oriented between these two lines. This is a treat for Reed. I don't think he's seen me cut one of these before. But I have it marked up within that grid. That's how I know I've got the pupillary distance perfect. The height of that line tells me the bifocal height of the pictures that he sent of me that had you in that compromising position, but don't worry, I won't uh, tell anyone about it once I post it on Facebook. But no, um, that is that. So, I need to attach this to your lens. This is called a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. Don't worry, your grandkids will explain that to you. But I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, and 3M makes some of those. 3M out of Minnesota. Yeah, don't you know? You betcha. I'm going to attach that to one of these blocks. What did I do with them? They're here somewhere. Once upon a time, there they are. Here are the two blocks with the stickers on there. See, it's 3M. That's why you know I'm using quality with you. I'm going to peel away the sticker to make the back side sticky. That black surface is the sticky surface. See? Okay, now let's... The little silver button on the back is a magnet. That's what's going to hold it in place right chan, as we say here in the dirty south. And... Well, maybe just me. Everyone else who learned proper English doesn't say that. But I'm going to hit the button. That's going to block, drop the block onto the, the lens. Let's do the same thing for the left lens. Let's rotate that and double check my math real quick. I didn't realize there's going to be so much math involved. All right, so again, I'm going to line that magnet up right there. Whoops, 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 whoops. All right, Reed's price keeps going up if I break stuff. Okay, so let's get this lined up. I think it goes like this. Does it matter how straight your lens is? It does? Okay, all right, well, I'll pay attention then. I'll tell you what, how about if I make them right for your 77th birthday? I'm just practicing. I'm learning how to do this for your 76th. Your 77th will be perfect. Let's hit that button. The arm's gonna come down and drop the block onto the left lens. So, this is actually the edger. This is my $40,000 Whitland device. 
It uh, weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy one, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut lenses at home. You won't need me anymore. But the actual cutting wheel is over here. On the inside, it's that far right wheel with that white residue on there. Please don't turn me into the police because of that. But anyway, that is the rough cutting wheel. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. That wheel in the center with that little channel, that valley, that's what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take the lens. Again, that magnet is going to hold it in place in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. I'm going to wake it up over here. That is the shape of your right lens. I'm going to take it down a quarter of a millimeter in advance. Probably going to have to do more than that. I do not want to put the bevel, I mean, uh, polish the lens. I don't want a bevel on the front surface. I'm only going to put one on the back surface. And I'm going to hit start. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then two white calipers are going to trace the shape of the lens to make sure it's large enough to fit into the frame. It's going to go all the way around tracing it to making sure it is large enough and then it's going to do it twice measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so the lens fits best inside the frame i could move the bevel forwards i could move it backwards so it'll fit best but with your prescription you're not really going to have any edge thickness now if you notice there is water running in the background that's just to collect optical sawdust polycarbonate cuts dry Plastic and high index lenses cut wet, but your lens is going to cut dry. Only water will spray on it at the very end. So your lens is now being applied to the cutting wheel. And what's cool, you can see the reflection in the background from your bifocal as it spins. Can you see that light reflecting back in the water? A little prismatic effect with your lens. Now your lenses, oops, look at that, I knocked the block off. Let's do this again. Put your left lens back up there. Where's my stylus? Where's my stylus? What did I do with it? Here it is. All right, so let's pull the shape back up. Your right lens is gonna pop up first. Pull the left up there. The shape is still memorized. We're gonna put that on there. By the way, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that will never need to be reapplied unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to re be reapplied every couple hours. You will never need to reapply the anti-glare, I mean the UV protection on your lenses. Now I mentioned the anti-glare. You have two add-on features. You have the transition that will turn dark when you go outside. You also have an anti-reflective coating that's going to eliminate glare when driving at night. If you notice water has just begun spraying on your lens, it does it for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. Now a little arm is going to come out. On the end of that arm is a little wheel, almost like you would find on a Dremel tool. And I'm putting a, it's just sanding down any rough edges that may be left over from the cutting cycle. This is known as the safety bevel. Just a moment. We're going to see if your lens fits first time around, which I doubt. I'm probably going to have to take it down a little bit more. That golden rule while cutting a piece of wood or lenses, you can always cut off more. You can never add it back on. So I start a little large and work my way down. And especially the 55, I'm wearing the 52 in the same frame. This is in the silver 6144. Reed, his first pair for me was the 6143, I believe, the darker gunmetal metallic but the 55 has a deeper bevel than the 52 that i wear so i'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside surface push down at the nose it doesn't want to go so i'm going to take it down another quarter of a millimeter now a millimeter to all my american friends is the distance between my thumbnails because you have no clue what a millimeter is so i'm going to take off 0.25 one quarter of that distance between my thumbnails but that anti-glare coating that you have 
It's three features in one. It eliminates glare primarily driving at night, but especially driving at night in the rain from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights like I have here. Now the second feature why a lot of people get it, it's an anti-reflection lens. I'm going to grab a lens that does not have it. So when someone's looking at you, they see just your eyes. They don't see their reflection in your glasses, so it makes for a much better eye contact. Some, so also, if someone takes a picture with a flash, or one of your grandkids takes a selfie with you, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens, you'll see just your eyes. Now the third feature that you and, and I like, because the practical side of us, is that Crizal puts the best scratch coating in the business on their lenses. Now nothing on God's green earth is scratch proof, but Crizal puts the strongest scratch coating of any manufacturer on the lenses because the machine that applies that anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to apply. So they put that coating on there, the scratch coating, to protect their, their time and their investment for having to apply that. So I've already taken a little bit more off of your lens. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs <laughs> I press down. And that's the other nice thing about that anti-glare coating. It's a hydrophobic surface. Well, you saw the block come off of this lens and it popped right off of that one. So let's go ahead and put the left lens in and hit start. Just like before the door closes, that clamp is going to shut. And then the two white styluses are gonna trace the shape of the left side of the frame as it goes around, making sure it's large enough to fit. And of course, doing it twice to measure the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have no edge thickness coming off the back surface of this frame. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the right lens while the left is cutting. Your right lens reads plus 175 minus two at 59. I'm gonna turn my lensometer on. You still have to do that. Let me just zero this out and make sure everything's in focus. It is, I'm gonna turn it to 59, which is one tick mark away from 60. I'm going to put your lens in and read the power and I'm getting lost without my flashlight. I'm getting plus 175, which is one tick mark away from two. So we're at plus 175 now. You have two steps, two diopters of astigmatism correction. So I'm going to subtract, whoops, sorry about that. Hope that wasn't loud. I'm going to subtract two diopters from the 175 and we're at minus a quarter. We're in the red. The way your prescription reads, plus 175 minus 2 at 59 you need you have both signs both plus and minus covered here but you need seven steps of magnification the unit of measurement we use is called a diopter and it starts at zero and goes up from there 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 1 and so on going up to 1.75 for your right eye you are far-sighted without your glasses on everything is much too small than than it really appears so that's why there's a plus size plus sign in front of your lens power your lenses will magnify to the correct size so you need seven steps of magnification for your farsightedness now you need an additional eight steps of astigmatism correction now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism it just means shape it's like saying someone has straight hair someone else has curly hair it is not a disease it is not an affliction but if you buy Reed an extra special birthday and Christmas present, it'll get better, I promise you. At least it will to him. But no, so this first number magnifies to the correct size. The second number takes away the fuzzy edges. That's why you squint with astigmatism. That's why sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. Think of astigmatism correction as a fine-tuned knob. And we're going to turn that knob to 59 a straight line is 0 to 180 all the way around with 90 being in the middle we're going to turn that knob to about 59 to get that fine tune action now your left eye is a little better you only need three steps of far-sighted correction but you still need six steps of astigmatism correction and we're going to turn that fine tune knob just past the 90 meridian to about 100 these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Now your bifocal strength is 250. You cannot go into a drugstore and buy plus 250 readers. The reason why this is called an add, it means in addition to what's on top. So when we add 250 to the 175 in your right eye, 
that comes out to four and a quarter, which you're not going to find on a drugstore rack. Your left eye plus 75 and 250 gives you three and a quarter. And of course, none of those are going to correct for your astigmatism correction. Now, get, you, if you find the strongest ones you can, that may work for if you're just trying to balance your checkbook or something like that. But if you're going to read for more than 15 or 20 minutes, you're definitely going to do better with any type of astigmatism correction. So you don't have to squint. Now, where are your glasses? Now, actually, since we're at plus 175, let's check your bifocal strength. I'm going to raise up and read it out of there. And what do you know? Four and a quarter. So that's made correctly. Let's turn the axis wheel to 100, and we're going to check the power of your left lens. So you know what? Let's put your left lens in first. Then we can check that. So I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Snap down. Your left lens goes in there easily. I'm going to go ahead and pull that magnet off. Pull that block off. And put the lens in. Read the distance correction of plus 75. We're going to check your stigmatism correction of minus 150 which gives us minus 75. So we go from plus 75 down on a zero wheel, plus 75 to zero, and then to minus 75 is a total of minus 150. So that is made correctly. We'll check your bifocal strength. When we add the 75 and the 250, we're gonna end up at three and a quarter. How about that for math? So that is made correctly. I couldn't make that any better if I made it myself. Now your pupillary distance is 62, so for a bifocal with a line, we measure, I'm going to hold that up, maybe you can see that. I'm going to start at the outside corner and measure to the outside corner of this lens, and we're getting 62 millimeters, so that is made perfectly. I do want to check your bifocal height real quickly. Perfect. Now, this is the time in every video that I explain to everyone that when you get these in the mail, these could be too loose or too tight, however, there's a... There's a small chance of that. However, there's a high. There's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different. But because of that, that's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And when I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and set them on the counter, they wobble. Now here's the difference. I'm wearing the 52. These are the 55 eye size, so mine's just a little bit smaller. I'm going to flip yours over once I put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. The temples aren't askew in any way. So this is what your lenses look like for the first time. They are still clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them in a strong ultraviolet lamp. And as you will see, Jin, all transition lenses will turn dark on day one. It takes about 30 seconds for them to darken, 30 to 45. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Jin, pay attention. This is important. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one, giving them two weeks of exposure to the sun, and they're going to continue to darken. They will... After two weeks, they'll be at their darkest, and they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause them to turn dark. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken, or as soon as you step out of the car, they will darken, just not inside of a car. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll work better when it's slightly cooler than extremely hot. When it gets over 90 degrees, they just don't get as dark as they do when it's below 90. I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody likes to work 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So that's it. That's the first time your transition lenses have been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker. Come on, Jen, we talked about this. Don't you remember? So that's that. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. That is what Reed did to find me. And now we're great friends. And I even drove up there to Sanford to have lunch with him last Wednesday. So Jen, happy 76th birthday from Brandy and from Nathan, Jordan, and Austin. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer, color 6052 in the black crystal and the 55 eye size, and hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.